Shalom, peace and blessings. Welcome to the Fourth Angels Learning Center. And today, today we're going to conclude with our final fruit study. Uh, we're going to be on the fruit of temperance. And we're going to see what that truly means in regards to fruit, in regards to what the Ruach and the Spirit is going to establish inside of us, in our minds, <clears throat> so we can demonstrate that for others. Uh, this is, uh, I don't even, I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> one of the most important things, but they're all important. Uh, but this is just as important. And uh, this is something that many of us kind of overlook because of certain terminologies and certain things. And we're going to kind of touch on a little bit about the terminologies. We do have the fruit of the spirit uh, series that's, that's already on the YouTube page. So you go check that out just to understand a little bit more about the spirit of a man and our spirit and how that functions in scripture how we how we view it and how it's supposed to be viewed so I, I would suggest you go check that out but this temperance has a lot to do with our spirit so we're going to look at that as well so let's go to galatians chapter 5 just to look at the word and get the definition of what it says all right galatians chapter 5 looking at verse 23 and we're going to conclude it conclude the whole sentence right so it says temperance and it says, against such, there is no law, meaning that the law is being honored by those who produce this spirit. If you produce this spirit, then your approach to Yah's law is going to be in a manner in which the law will not be against you. The law will not condemn you because you are not going to be walking contrary to the law because the law is also spiritual. Just want everybody to understand that. The law is spiritual. According, even Paul says that Romans chapter 7, I think verse 12, it says the law is holy and the commandment is holy, just, and good. The law is holy. And to be holy, you have to have the spirit. So it's a spiritual thing. Definitely a spiritual thing. So let's, if we go back down, we're looking at the word temperance, the fruit of the spirit, temperance. Let's break that down, see what we can see in the, in the Greek. G1466. G1466, and it says, self-control. Self-control. This is so important to us this is so important to everything that we're doing our, our lifestyle our walk with yah this is so in, important if this if we lose this there's nothing else that could be held together there's nothing else in your life that could be held together in any aspect of your life if you don't have self-control don't have self-control your relationships will go so many things so many things. You become an, an, an addict to many different things. Look what it says. The virtue of one who masters his desires and passion, especially his sensual appetites. This is a, a very good, very good description of what self-control is. A person who is master over his desires is a passions. It's not follow your heart. It's control it, direct it, put it where you need to put it. Don't allow it to go where it wants to go. This is the Thayers, right? Let's look at the Strongs. Self-control, especially continence, which is uh, over the passions of the body. Very important, very important to us. Temperance. So let's start to look at this verse, right? Let's start to look at this word. Uh, let's start to look at this idea of self-control. Let's look at a few verses real quick in the book of Proverbs. Uh, definitely, definitely very important. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 16, looking at verse 32. Check this out. He that is slow to anger, right? Slow to anger is better than the mighty. He that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. A person that is slow to anger, meaning that they're able to control their emotions, is better than a mighty man, like a warrior. 
he that it rules his spirit than a person that's able to take over a city. What does it mean to rule your spirit? To rule your spirit is to rule your mind. It's to rule your mind. Just to reiterate uh, the meaning of ruach, let's look at what the word ruach is, right? Now, many know it to mean breath and wind, but they, they skip over the fact that it, the emphasis of spirit is a rational being to have rationale, right? Look at what it says here, the mind. We we miss over those, those uh, applications of the word ruach because the word ruach is applied as mind many times in the scripture. The Browns give it, a, it, it unites the word mind with spirit and breath and wind as well. Uh, let's see if we can find... Um, see if uh, the Browns give any other aspect to it. Okay, so the mind. So it says if you control, if a person is able to control his emotion, he's better than a warrior. And if you can rule over your mind and emotions and thoughts, then you are better than a person that can rule over a city or take over a city. Let's get a little bit more detail. Proverbs chapter 25 says something similar. Looking at verse 28, it says, he that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that's broken down without walls. A person with no rule over his own spirit. Very important. If you are unable to control your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, then you are like a wall broken down without, a city broken down without walls. Now, what's the emphasis? What's the necessity of walls to surround a city? It is to keep the enemies out. It's to keep the enemies at bay, right? But if you have no wall, then the enemy could do whatever it want they want to you at whatever time. This is exactly what the emphasis here is. If you are unable to control your mind, your thoughts, and your emotions, and your cravings, then the enemy can, uh, can move you, not even just tempt you, but control you through those appetites, through those cravings, through those urges and propensities, through those emotions and desires, through those thoughts. If you are unable to rule and control that by the power of the Spirit, you are the, the enemy has free access to do whatever he wants, like a city without walls. Let's look at a few verses. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We are looking at a few verses. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 1, looking at verse 7, and it says this. It says, For Elohim have not given us the spirit of fear. Remember what we said the word spirit meant? Mind. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. You see the contrast? The contrast to the mind of fear is a sound mind. Now let's see what that word sound mind means. G4995. Forty nine ninety five means disciplined. A disciplined mind, a self-control to make the mind sound or disciplined, disciplined or corrected. What's the difference between the spirit of fear? Well, what happens to your mind when you have thoughts of fear? What happens to your confidence? What happens to your trust? Your The fear of your mind, the fearful thoughts causes anxiety. It causes nervousness. It causes a lot of these different things in the body, in the mind. It causes more thoughts, imaginary thoughts, that will cause you to lose control. It'll cause you to lose power. It says here, power. It cause you to lose love. There's people who would desert their family because of fear. Matter of fact, Matthew 24 talks about the last days. It says, um, men's hearts will fail them for fear. Their hearts will fail them for fear, meaning that they will not even, the things that they believe in, they will put to the side because they are fearful of the outcome. Scripture says that they will try to save their own life instead of trying to 
to, to lose it for Yah's sake. They would try to save their own life because of fear. Giving up their own children because of fear. I've seen it. So this is the mindset. Yah wants us to have control, to be able to put our mind on the promises of Yah, have, have firm, stable, secure thoughts pertaining to what Yah will do for you, what Yah says to do. This is, this is so important to our walk. This is so important to our daily acknowledgement, our daily, we wake up, understanding this and walking this out to allow our minds to just be free to go wherever it wants is not the will of Yah. He even told Cain about himself. Let's go to that. Genesis chapter four. Look at what he said to Cain about his, his countenance. He's, he knew what was in his mind. Yah said to Cain, why are you wroth? Why is your countenance fallen? Why is your physical body, why is your face, your body, your walk, your talk, your actions, why is your why are your emotions controlling your countenance? If you do well, shall you not be accepted? If you don't do well, sin lies at the door. Now look what it says. And unto you is his desire and you shall rule over him. And you shall rule over him. Yah is trying to tell Cain to surrender to him. Do good. Put your mind on him, and he will give you the ability to rule over sin, to rule over it, to be a conqueror over it. Rule over sin. But instead, we can see directly after this statement in verse 8, Cain talked with Abel. It doesn't say the conversation. It doesn't say it. But we just know that something took over Cain. It came to pass that when he were, they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Whatever they spoke about caused him to be even more rough, caused his countenance to be even more changed, caused his mind. And, if, and essentially, sin started to rule over Cain. It started to control him because he was not in control over himself. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. I hope that you guys can see the harmony within the scriptures from the Old Testament to the New. It's not the way that, you know, it's extremely scholastical. Like, it's very, it's very powerful and so deep but it's extremely simple. It does not need to be broken down like some type of worldly medical book or worldly lecture. Absolutely not. Don't let people fool you to make you think the Hebraic and all of this stuff. Look at it for what it is. Because even the Hebrews didn't look at it properly, obviously. We need to understand. We need to see it according to Yah's lens, not a Hebrew's lens. Look at what it says here in Romans 6. It says many things in Romans 6. I would, I would, I would uh, encourage everybody to go back and, and read through Romans 6 very carefully. Um, all right. So it says, let not therefore sin reign, right? Reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in his lust. That word reign here is the same word that's used in like a dominion, like a rulership to be a ruler over, right? Don't let sin be the ruler over your body, your flesh, that it may obey it. And it says, whoever, whatever you yield, right? Whatever you yield your body as instruments of right, unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto Elohim as those that are alive from the dead, your body as instruments of righteousness is telling you to yield your members because you are in control. When you receive the Ruach, you are now in control. When you don't have the Ruach, sin is in control. That's why we ask Yah to save us. We ask him for deliverance. It says, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the condemnation of the law, but under grace, right? Let's look at a few more words, right? No dominion over you. It won't reign over you. So what is it implying? That you now reign that you now reign over it. 
it says here in verse 20, this is a, a perfect, perfect wording. I'm trying to look for the perfect wording to, so we can see the rulership of sin. It says here, for when you were the servants or the slaves of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit did you have in those things that you are now ashamed of? Meaning like, what benefit, what, what benefit did you get from, from living in a life of sin? The end of those things was death. Every single thing that we can talk about in our past life without Yah was death because we were slaves to it. But Yah says that we are free. Verse 18, being made free from sin, you became the slaves of righteousness. To be a slave of right, you can't be two people's slaves, especially if those two things are contrasting each other. You know, so let's go, let's go to another. Let's go to second, second Peter. Second Peter chapter one. Right? Let's look at the science behind it, right? All the, the compounds, all the things that come together. Look at what it says. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. These are the things that we ought to believe in. These are the things that we ought to desire. It says that by these, by these promises, you might be partakers of the divine nature. The divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, all diligence, now you are able to control which direction you place your mind, your energy, your strength. You add to your faith virtue and to the virtue knowledge. As you add knowledge, it will increase in your self-control. As you add understanding, you apply understanding. Let me say that. As you apply faith, in Yah's word, you will gain virtue. As you gain virtue, which is a desire to do what Yah says, you will gain understanding. And as you gain understanding of what Yah says, you will gain control. And to control patience, you'll be able to withstand and you'll be able to wait on Yah. And then it says, and what comes from patience is godliness. You'll be able to display the righteousness of Yah. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Now your righteousness that is given from Yah is now displayed to your brothers and sisters. And to brotherly kindness, love. And love will lead you to even sacrifice yourself for your brothers and sisters. For if these things are in you, and abound, this is this is so important, and abound. They have to mature. They have to grow. If they these things are in you and they abound, they make you that you are neither barren nor unfruitful. You see that? Fruit to the Spirit. If these things abound in you, they make you neither barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Master, Yahushua Messiah. This is all a reflection of Yahushua. This is all a reflection of our king and our master. This is all a reflection of our submission to him. And in our submission to him, he takes us through the science of it. Put your energy and strength into your belief. Put your, your belief and strength and energy into the desire to obey. Put that desire to obey into pr the pursuit of knowledge and understanding. As you pursue and apply the knowledge and understanding, start to discipline yourself, right? Temperance. Discipline yourself in self-control. Controlling the direction that your cravings go, that your desire go, right? In that direction, allow it to develop that patience, waiting on Yah to fulfill His motive, His desires in you, and not trying to accomplish everything yourself personally, and allowing that to manifest into Yah's godliness, his righteousness, his character, and that display of his character and brotherly kindness, the thoughts of godliness, the thoughts of what Yah's will is, to direct those thoughts that, Yah's, that Yah has towards us, 
to to have those same thoughts for our brothers and then in manifestation and helping our brothers to obtain those things those plans that Yah has for them in love this is what allows us not to be barren this is what allows us not to be fruitful because we are warned that if our tree is not fruitful that we'll be cut down and praise Yah that he has given us his ruach his spirit to cause us to be fruitful if we surrender to these things, we have to study these things to understand clearly what these things are. And praise Yah for his word. Praise Yah that is simple for the simplicity of his word. I hope that this can encourage everybody. Let's go back to studying in its most simplest, simplistic form that we may all be able to study and receive from the Ruach. Nobody needs to come to me. Nobody needs to come to any teacher if you find yourself needing to go to a teacher, then try to understand how can you become, how can you become a person that receives understanding from Yah? And we may we may have a study on that so we can put that in practice as well. But we praise Yah for his fruit. We praise Yah for his ruach. And see you in the next series. Shalom, everyone.